This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by JP Cycles, the best aftermarket parts and accessories for your motorcycle. Save up to 30% off with code MMAN. Factor 75, get fresh meals delivered to your door. Use code MMA Nuts for $40 off your first two weeks. Liquid Web, save 34% off for three months with code MMAN34 off. Mattress Firm, get 10% off with code MMA Nuts10. Defense Soap, the ultimate soap for wrestlers, Jiu Jitsu, and MMA athletes with the new peppermint oil bars and shower gel. Use code MMA Nuts for 15% off. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 399. 399. My name is Ingo Weigold. Back with another show. Bye bye fans, for my fans, walking live between serious and ridiculous. What's happening? Bringing the hammer down. I've tried to every weekend. You, know. you didn't trick me. Or thank, Monday. Thank, thankfully. You bring, you, you, today's Monday. Yeah, damn right. Yeah, all day. Monday night football. Yeah, last last week was the Bears. They're, hey. By the way, they're in first place. The Bears! In, I don't think they've been in first place since, like, a long fucking time. I have a question. Yeah. Ditka versus the Hurricane. What's the name of the Hurricane? Ditka. Then Ditka wins. Hmm. I don't... <laughs> I don't remember the skit. Uh, but I think Ditka wins. Yeah. Yeah, it was, he, would, he said Ditka, and then the guy said, what if the Hurricane's name was Ditka? And right. then they just go... Hmm. <laughs> Dicka Wallace Sassage. <laughs> that, that makes a baker's dozen. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what we should talk about first. I guess we cover the the Conor McGregor thing, I would say, right? So yeah, so they have uh, the press conference. Habib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. Yeah. So, I pres- pursue it. Peruse it. We're starting already with my retarded. Pursue and peruse. Very close. I, right. I, I can understand how you mix yeah. that up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, live watching the event, there's 551,000 people. Whoa! Live. That's watching. insane. The stream didn't crash. No, I didn't watch it all. At Impressive. That point. Three days afterwards, there 4.1 million people have viewed. That press conference. Wow, it's almost one of the top videos on the UFC's channel already. That's crazy, that's a fuck ton. And I know Dana White's. I'll talk about the press conference in a second, but Dana White's been saying he thinks, and everything's trending towards a 2.5 million pay-per-view buy rate. Is Whoa. this out of the realm of reality? I think the undercard is too weak, but I could be wrong. I, I feel like if they had a good ty- co-main event. Easily 2.5 million, but can Connor pull that by himself? I don't know, because he did do the boxing, so I wonder if they'll draw from some of those fans yeah. that remembered that fight, you know? I, I don't know, 2.5 is high. I, I'm, I'm thinking one and a half. Yeah, I don't even know where uh, I'm standing anymore. I could, I'm almost. Well, you're not, you're sitting at the moment. I, I try to, it's very comfortable. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. That's so good. <laughs> I'm saying possibly two. Two million? Just because based on what I saw on the fucking number of views already, in three days, four million views. It's crazy. Four million. Well, and the, the, the topper is to this. So they do this press conference. They have nobody come to see it, and I swear it was in Madison Square Garden. So all you do, you have the two of them out there, the screen, and fucking media, and no fans. That's crazy. It's the creepiest shit ever. So Connor's going off. He's saying all his shit. He's saying, like, what kind of belt is that? You beat the number 11 fucking real estate agent. How do you have that belt? You know, ask these nuts. He said that, <laughs> man. Yeah. And He's got his whiskey out. Yeah. I think the best could be mustard was calling McConnor an alcoholic, right? That's about the best. So I wonder, though, I didn't know that about the no fans. I, because people are saying that Connor is in his head. But I wonder if it's more of the, the scenario. That's got to be fucking weird. You're sitting there, and there's no one there. And usually a weigh we've been to a bunch yeah. of them. Like, there's a lot of energy in the room, and now there's, there's it's none. It's dead. It's just crickets. So it's like the shit that you normally hear. Like, yeah. imagine all the other press conference of, like, McGregor and Diaz and how crazy that is. And then he says something, and then the crowd yeah. goes fucking bananas. So it's like you're waiting for that reaction. You get nothing. Well, like, what a wasted fucking opportunity. It is. Well, I'm wondering, too, if that affected Khabib's, like, 
presence at the con at, at the so that that's why he seems so like dominated and beaten because Connor is kind of like just used to having cameras yeah. in his face, and but uh, Khabib is like maybe a guy who feeds off the crowd and so like he couldn't get into the conference because he seemed like Connor was just running the game. Well, it seems like he's struggling with the language too, Could be the, so it yeah. might be a little language barrier, mm -hmm. and I think he's trying to be so calm. Yeah. Right? I mean, he got a little elevated, but not. He's not going to go over like a three. We need him at like an eight. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, what I'm he's looking not for. helping sell the fight, but I don't even know if he needs to. I mean, mm. Connor's just going to be Connor and do whatever he needs to do and like pour his proper fucking whiskey and offer it to Khabib, knowing damn well he ain't going to take a sip of that. What if Khabib just comes out and manhandles him, a la like. Remember, remember Daniel Cormier and Dan Henderson? How he was just yeah. <laughs> fucking threw him all over the I place. Don't, I don't. I what think if, that's what if, what's gonna happen. What if it's just this Russian is just brooding slowly? Like there's this um, hatred and just disdain yeah. for the Irishman, and he's just like, I will fucking murder you. I don't have to say anything. You're dead. You're a dead. You're a dead man. And he comes out yeah. and does it. Imagine that. that would, I can imagine it because he's, he's not gonna. Like I've said in the past, you're not gonna win. There's no intimidation nah. that you can offer. No. I don't see that. He's fucking Russian. He's lived a hard life probably in the yeah. past. He like, wrestles bears. Right. Nothing you say is going to get into his head. You cannot shake that guy. I yeah. don't see it. Yeah. It's He's undefeated. It's Even, up. I mean, McGregor said, like, you've fought nobody, which is yeah. kind of true, but he doesn't know how to lose yet. Hmm. And if you can't get into his head, like, like all the check marks are going in the Habib's side right now. Of like, advantage, advantage, advantage. Yeah. The the only the question mark. I think the biggest question mark is how does he react under the biggest of all the lights? You know, at yeah. that moment. And that's happening in two weeks. You are the main event. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I forgot the fifth or sixth, whatever. The, like two weeks from. Yeah. This weekend. Can he handle the pressure? I, I, I don't know. Does he wilt? If he gets hit once, does he wilt? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know the answer I to that. I don't see it. I think he wins. But. And then I also saw that McGregor signed a six-fight deal. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> good for him. Is he going to fight six more times? I don't think or? so. What do you think happens if McGregor loses? Immediate rematch? Well, I, I think he's going to take time off, was the thing I read. that More time off? <laughs> well, he's got a second kid apparently on the way, so he's not going to come back. I think January is the due date, so okay. he's going to be out probably till March. But the excuses will be, ah, he's the better man, you know, he came in with a better game plan, I had cardio issues, his wrestling is too good for me. But I don't know who he fights next either. Is it the probably trilogy with Diaz? Yeah. Win or lose. He's got to do that next. Trilogy with Diaz. Yeah. Then he holds the belt again, which is weird. Uh huh. The belt that he never lost. Yeah. <laughs> so they just strip belts away. So they strip the forty-five. They strip the fifty-five. Even though at the press conference, he says, uh, Connor sits there with two belts in front of him. Mm -hmm. he He's owns the real champ. Of them. He's the real champ. <laughs> he is. Yeah. He's never lost. No. He's never defended. So true, true. Interesting. Do you want to move on from? Uh... Yeah, okay. let's do that. Can I talk to you about something? Yeah. So we had a UFC this weekend, and uh, not only did I not know there was a UFC, yeah, but apparently one of the fighters on the card didn't know either. Which one? <laughs> Henan Barral missed weight by over five pounds, and um, I just want to say, yeah. I, I feel, I feel really, I really feel for him because I feel like. Part of his soul was stolen, like Dillashaw. Yeah. Just, I, I don't. Sometimes you know shit happens, and the fighters. I feel like he just robbed that man of his soul, yeah. and now this kind of shit's happening. I, I don't understand how he misses weight by over five pounds. It, it, it's it's. Uh, well, I don't know why he's still fighting at forty five because this isn't the first time he's missed weight. Yeah, because he can't make the weight. To, I, I don't know. Are they, they going to stop him now from fighting at forty five? Well, they should. Is he gonna retire? I'll, I'll, if you miss weight, like that should be mandatory next weight class. They were going with that plan for a while. Yeah. And then I think it just kind of depends, like, who are you and what is your worth to us? Mm. But who is Ren Henan Burrell? Do we know? At this point, I don't know. 
I don't see him uh, winning any more titles. I think he's a uh, psychologically head game. head game problem. Yes. Maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's tough. Yeah. I saw Char Charles Oliveira fought on a card too. Just mm -hmm. surpassed Hoyce Gracie. Eleven Ooh. submission wins. I believe he has twenty-two finishes out of twenty-four fights. Yeah, maybe like fifteen submission wins or something ridiculous now. And remember, like back when he first came in and he was getting all those exotic submissions. Yes. Like, like what the fuck is this? And he's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And now he's talking about when he wants to go down a weight class or something. He's crazy. super skinny already. How, how's he gonna well, lose more I weight? I think he had weight problems too. So like. Hmm. What are you guys doing? I don't understand it. Yeah, he's saying he wants to go back to 145. Okay. No. <laughs> Stay up. Stay up. Let's talk about John Jones. Oh. Your favorite fighter. <laughs> he gets a 15 month suspension from USADA. Which he already served how many months of? A lot, because he can <laughs> 14. fight. 14? Yeah, he can fight on October 28th, <laughs> so pretty fuck? much it's already over. <laughs> That's bullshit. He fights out and it's done. Come on, man. Time already served. That's such nonsense. Okay. In, in MMA fighting, this is what they had to say. They said, go because he went to arbitration. Oh. So going in our arbitration, you saw to already determine there should be a reduction of two years and six months to a potential Jones suspension based on Jones' delivery of substantial assistance. It says Jones was facing a four-year ban because this mm. was his second UFC anti-doping policy violation. And then later it says the uh, suspension, uh, 15 months, was based on Jones' degree of fall, which took into account that he had passed multiple out-of-competition drug tests leading up to UFC 214. Double thumbs down. I'm doing before it. failing the in-competition test, the one he knew was coming. Jones was tested eight times in ten months around UFC 214 and failed just the one test. So let's go back to that, um, why he got the reduction of two years and six months. Based on Jones' delivery of substantial assistance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take him long. I was like, how, how many minutes into the show before he's like, make some sort of cock reference? I don't know. It's been seven What's minutes, maybe eight minutes. This is the time. Okay. The time. Yeah, it's got a lot on you guys mind. can take bets. I'm a always thinking about dicks cocks, on his brain. dicks on my mind all the time, like dicks, what do you think about <laughs> dick, all day, dick, dicks. dicks all day, great, great, taking loads to the face. So the rumor was that <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> In fact, I'm joking. I knew this was gonna happen before the show. <laughs> that Jones is a snitch. Like, he had to rat out other PED yeah. users. What do because you Because he got a sentence reduced. You think? Yeah, he, because of that um, stipulation. Uh, I think it's certainly plausible. I, I don't think this guy would do anything. Uh, uh, he wouldn't not do anything to save himself. Oh, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Word that correctly. I'm trying to find the words. He would. I'm saying he would do anything okay. to save himself, including okay. being a snitch. Uh, you know, I, I don't doubt that. I mean, I, I wonder what he uh, confessed to. Because have we seen any other major... People getting busted. Or the only other person that got busted recently was Fabrizio Verdu. Which had nothing. Well, he got just a straight up two year yeah. and there was nothing no. going on. Uh, my theory on this is that he gave up nothing and this is just another way for the UFC slash USADA to say, hey, this is how we get a reduced sentence. Kind of like ah. when Brock Lesnar came in and. Oh, uh, well, we just found this stipulation to get a uh, one-month waiver, and mm -hmm. you know, here's how he gets in. Ah, so maybe he was helpful in don donations. Uh, I read somewhere, though, that he has community time served or something still, John Jones? Probably. Like a couple thousand hours or something crazy? <laughs> a couple <laughs> quadrillion <laughs> hours. I think it's in the thousands, and somehow they're trying to figure out when he's going to start serving that. But Yeah, and they said, I don't think we have a headliner for UFC 230. And I think that's the the big event where it's supposed to be the 25th uh -huh. anniversary. It's supposed to be the super stack card, and they have no main event. Rumor really? of John Jones versus Stipe is one of them. There's a rumor of John Jones versus Cain Velasquez. Random. Like, yeah. <laughs> totally like, random. I, don't, like, I didn't think gonna wheel him out on a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> he might break his leg on the way out. Wow. Like, oh, like a session. Jones. Okay. Brock Lesnar! Please. There's <laughs> it, so much money. Is that an October card? 
Oh, it's a Brocktober! <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to Brocktober me? Oh my god. Holy shit. Halloween weekend. Let's do it. Yeah. Right? Sweet. Yeah, Hall well, Halloween falls on a Wednesday, but the weekend before. Yeah. That'd be sweet. October 25th or something? Right? Something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm in for this. I like I like what you're selling, Matt. <sighs> Tell me more! Well, I really want that fight <laughs> to happen, because that, that's the scenario, right? Yeah. You have Brock come back. You have him face John. It's getting fired it's up. Curveball. Here we go. Then you're going to really piss off DC, and then DC is going to want to fight him a third time. Regardless of what happens. You think I'm just going to let you just kill me, John? <laughs> you think I'm going to just like, sit here and let you steal my biggest payday in my life again? Uh, again, right. Well, I hold the fake light heavyweight belt, but I'm a legitimate heavyweight champ. That's right. He's legit. And then John's going to have to fight DC at heavyweight. He's going to have to fight him twice. Right. They might as well make that an interim belt. Mm. Just to spite DC. They should fight at 220 for both belts. Fine. <laughs> make a third belt. <laughs> there you go. Interim. Yes. I don't care. I don't care. I think we spite DC in this one. Boy. I feel this, uh, the need to spite him. Because I don't have... Who else do you have John fight that makes any kind of sense? You can't... What are you going to do? Gustafson? Nah. Don't care about that. Brock Lesnar, DC. It's got to be something or that's going to... Just like people are going to be like, holy... F I could buy Stipe. I could, I could buy that as a, as a primer. It's sellable, but my, our bet does not pay on a Stipe. It does not pay on a Kane. No. We need a Luke Rockhold or a Brock Lesnar. Ooh, those are Rockhold. the only people that I'm going to accept because those pay us a lot of money. Bazillions <laughs> will be. The podcast will be money. over. We, we bet the They were like that. plus 5,500. Wow. It pays like and we bet a lot like of monies. Thousands. No. No? Only $44 to pay like 2,500. Ah. Wow, that'd be nice if that pays out. We're going on vacation if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll go, you, we'll, it's in your court, UFC. We'll go to Colorado for a weekend. We'll just get high for three days. Do nothing. I can do that right <laughs> here. <laughs> that would be better in the Colorado. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Then what else you got? Let's uh, get out of the genre. Uh, okay. Um, Before so, you say anything. <laughs> about dicks? <laughs> no, about... Uh, Racist? Yeah. Austin Batra, all right, had okay. an amateur title fight. And uh, I showed you the video earlier. So this this is this is uh, apparently. Um, so the fight is happening. Yeah. The ref is uh, going to step in shortly. This is kind of long. Yeah. Oh, you're let's, fine. Let's fast forward it. So he knocks him down, right? Yeah. He's Falls, out. He's cold. out. Arms up. Like uh, Terry. The ref steps style. in. Then he goes flying berserk. <laughs> the double X. <action. laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I want to do a Dan Henderson finish. What's this bullshit of you ref stepping in? And it's like, dude. I gotta call shenanigans. This looks like a fucking movie. <laughs> this is it's not really crazy. one of the fucking real fights, is it? Uh, it's real fight. Um, so is Battle this guy... Fight League in Col Coquitlam, British Columbia. However you say that. Is this guy ever gonna fight again? Uh, it because doesn't... that looks like one of those fouls that they throw you out of the sport Well, he got disqualified. Well. And it was an amateur fight. So I'm guessing, most likely, nothing will happen. That's my guess. I guess it also depends what state. Yeah. John Jones is going to get to John Jones. Mississippi or Wyoming. But I don't care so much. Or is that an Indian reservation? Oh, shit. I just deleted it. I didn't see. I don't think so. Oh. It's all right. I don't think so. Doesn't even matter. Who cares? It's an amateur fight. Do whatever you like. Okay. Bring guns. Doesn't matter. What? Knives. No. Nunchucks. No weapons. No weapons. <laughs> nunchucks. Uh, I nunchucks, I will. I would love them. to see a nunchuck, a real nunchuck um, battle. I've never seen a nunchuck fight. I've never <laughs> seen someone awesome. fight someone with nunchucks. <laughs> That'd be sweet. I only see people whipping them around. Yeah. I've got two pairs right there. But I want to see two guys with nunchucks fight each Ingo. other. I have two pairs of nunchucks. <laughs> not, not, right I don't here. know how to swing a nunchuck. It's fine. <laughs> I'll break my arm. I'll give you the wooden ones. I'll take the rubber ones. No. I'm I'll not fuck doing, myself up before I'm not I doing anybody. that. You want me to? The way I'll be like, whoa, bam, smack myself I'll in the head. I'll hit you square in the balls. <laughs> that's, that's, I need my balls. Don't don't hurt that. Okay. All right. So I saw Teddy Atlas was on the Joe Rogan show. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking a little boxing. A little bit. He said he thought Triple G won the fight by five rounds. Instead of four or three? Yeah, I thought three. And I think that was... The consensus was Triple G one mm -hmm. across the board. He's saying a lot of corruption there in boxing and basically saying that there should be some more separation because right now mm -hmm. he was telling the story of... Church and state? Yeah. You have the promoter 
who basically pays for the judges and pays for everybody to come and be at the event. But then also, like the night before, they're all eating dinner together. The ah. fucking promoter is footing the bill and you're sitting at a, he says, it's not the, like the Last Supper table, but it's a huge table where everyone's sitting. You got the judges, ref, whoever, all sitting around being the bill footed by the promoter. So mm. don't you think there's going to be some, what do you want to call it? Conflict of interest? Where they might want to, oh, who do they want to win? Maybe mm. I need to pick that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it Sounds very fishy to me, Matt. <clears throat> yeah. I don't even see how this is legal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, it's like we it's blurred like, a line between... Wow entertainment and sport yeah and it's it's in boxing that's way blurred yes it's blurred to the point where i've said i don't watch it because nah you can't you <clears throat> if it goes to decision you have no idea who's going to win so the, the, you can make the case that in boxing the only way to assure victory is to get the ko yeah otherwise who knows and here's the other thing he was talking about he was talking about body shots because remember last oh week, yeah i was yep. going what the fuck is a body shot worth 10 headshots? He was saying one hard body shot is worth two jabs. Why? Hard or blow. Huh. Jab could be pitter patter, uh -huh. but volume can overcome that. Uh -huh. But it, it, so his equation was one hard body shot is like two jabs. Okay. So I'm like, okay. I don't, I, my, Equate it to a regular body shot. Is a regular body shot worth a jab? I don't know. I I view all strikes the same, but then there's a power difference, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's where you go into the significant strike category, or you go into like my holy shit category, where you've wobbled the person. Yeah. Right. Or if you've how do you know how do you know if it's person, hard or not? How can you tell? Sound. Oh. Think about a. The Thiago Alves, Josh Koscheck leg kick. Good point. The percussion. <laughs> <laughs> There's that was, percussion. That was horrible, yeah. Throughout the whole arena. Yeah, yeah. It's tough because I, w yeah. I would think most body shots are going to be pretty hard. Yeah, it should be. Versus a jab. Jab, you're not going to fucking, mm -hmm. you know. I don't like all the subjectiveness. It's just, you, you, a goddamn computer should be scoring the fights. Mm -hmm. Then we take out any fucking shadiness that could happen. Yeah. So, I don't know. So we got that going. And then he also got into, uh, like, a lot of other shit. But yes. I wouldn't recommend watching it. I'm just saying it right Okay. Now. I'm, like, two hours in. Mm. Got any other... Uh, I'm out of news. Oh. Okay. I'll tell you now. So uh, Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz fight. Which Tito said is happening in Las Vegas, California. I'm not excited, man. Las Vegas, California. Yes. You're you're in the Tito land, right? Uh, yes. I'm so a, I'm a fan of uh, boxing for geriatrics. Sir, they said uh, since it's happening in California, they're going to do out of competition drug testing. <laughs> and you saw the poster for. <laughs> Yo. Uh, are we going to get a fight? Or are we going to get a positive? Oh, we'll get a drug fight. Test? Don't worry. Don't worry. They're going to have any well, weigh-in rules or anything about cutting or any of that stuff? Well, if Wait, you're doing out-of-competition drug testing... Do we take them out? What? <laughs> Are you okay over there? No, I'm not. Like, <laughs> sometimes the, the beard slash mustache hair gets into mouth. You can't quite get it out. Oh, yeah. No problem. I have that problem sometimes, too. But if we're going to do out-of-competition drug testing, I think we have a problem, though. No? Nah, they're going to test it like once each. No, but that's Andy Foster. He's going to oh, test Oh, he didn't say that. Okay. California, yeah. Yeah. so... Uh, I don't think that fight's going to happen now because of that. <clears throat> They'll move it to uh, Indian, Indian and, Reservation. Unless both of them, well, the, the one thing is both those guys have money. Mm -hmm. So they can buy the best drug as possible to mm -hmm. avoid detection. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move right along before I mm -hmm. say anything allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. So Johnny Hendricks did an interview with MMA Fighting. He's my favorite new topic. You love talking about him. I do. Huh? <laughs> he says USADA. Messed up his fighting career. Oh, really? How so? Because he couldn't use an IV. To rehydrate? Yeah. So he said when he used an IV, that would bring him back to about 90%. Here's Johnny Not 70. Hendricks. Here's Johnny Hendricks. This is, he gets even better. 
He said when he would use an IV, he'd be back to 90%. And he also said he was cutting from 210, by the way, to go to 170. Wow. 90% Johnny Hendrix with an IV. Without an IV, you're getting 50% Johnny Hendrix. Okay. He said he would feel great using it also, so... I don't, what do you make of that? I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, I, make, yeah, I think fucking... he's been in the wrong weight class in that case. <laughs> <It's> 210? <laughs> That's you, a big... You got a couple of weight classes. 205 is right there. Wow, 205, wow. 185. Is it Johnny Hendrix at 205? Johnny Hendrix versus John Jones? <laughs> no, he's like half his height. How's that fucking going to work? <laughs> takedowns. Yeah, easier to get the takedown, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, also easier to get kicked in the face. Yeah, knees in the face. <laughs> All that good stuff. It doesn't stuff. bode well. For, yeah, no, I, I don't see that happening. 210 pounds, that's insanity. It's like fucking rumble. You saw the... It's a motherfucker. It is. Would you like a little... Just a little bit, sure. Why not? Not much. A half or... No, nah, less than half. Right. Just a little taste. Just say when. That's good. Right. So it's give me a little taste. As so, we yeah. Imbibe so in our... What is this, cider? Yeah. A little crispin. So he's going to do his little bare knuckle Thank you. boxing thing. He's fired up. Welcome. We have Mark Hunt accepting Gokan Saki's challenge for a farewell fight at UFC Adelaide. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. They're going to fight for real? Yeah. That's insane. I don't know if it's official, but they both, I think, on Twitter said, listen, let's just stand and bang it out. It's oh, my yeah. last fight in the UFC. You, you in? <laughs> I'm in. Saki's crazy. Remember we saw him? That guy just swings for the fences yeah. every time. That's going to be insane. Someone's no takedowns. No, someone's getting starched. Gentleman's agreement to stand and bang it out. I think Saki's going to get KO'd. Yeah. Is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't care. He'd probably be happy about no. it. No. What else? Kyla Harrison said the PFL is going to create a 155-pound female weight class for her in MMA mm. and establishing... That female fighters will have the same opportunities at winning prize money as the male fighters. Uh, Why? Because of bigger weight class or something? Well, they they didn't have... I don't even know if they had a, a fucking... Because she was always doing one-off fights for them. Like, yeah. she's had two one-off fights and, like, been pretty dominant in those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the question is, like, how many chicks are there that are 155? A lot. Well, you, you cyborg. Right. But I mean, that are free floating out there. Oh, That's the oh, question. Oh, I don't know about that one. You free know, floating. Because, I mean, Bellator's got their mm -hmm. 145s. UFC's got, like, one. <laughs> I, I wonder who <laughs> decided on this build the 145 out. five thing. What, why is it everything five? Why can't we have 150, 160, 170? Good question. Why is it five? I don't know. And boxing is even more fragmented. I don't know what all the weight classes are over there, but there's way more. Well, they have 147, 147 and a half, 148, 148 yeah. and a half, 149. And, and that probably varies by uh, 18 different organizations. Yeah. Because I wonder if there was a somebody sat down and decided on physiological aspects of a human body and was like, mm -hmm. these are the right weights. Or someone was just like, fuck it. Did it's you? probably just arbitrary. Yeah. I mean, Why the UFC, five? it's totally arbitrary. Because how yeah. did you even get there in the first place? I mean, we didn't even have any of the lighter weight classes to start with. I mean, no. we went from open weight to, you know, a handful of weight classes and nothing under 155. You think it's the, f the five is in there because it sounds more epic? Because it's, what well, it sounds more epic, 180? 185. Yeah, it's more dramatic. Right? It's for effect. <laughs> I think so. 205. Yeah. It's better yeah. than 200, right? I think 125. That's why, I think that's why they put five in there. I, I just We just figured it out. <laughs> no, you figured it out. You're yeah. the smart person. This is our show. This is a we thing. It's a team effort. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Somebody well, who knows this. Maybe. Sometimes. They should let us know. I'm wrong a lot. Not when it comes to dicks. It says... Uh, <laughs> this is picture. Double fisted. <laughs> so that's, that's how I picture. No, so here's me in college. Like I'm walking around. I'm at the bar. I'm double fisting. It's penny pitcher night. Ooh. I'm double fisting penny pitchers. I imagine Ingo at the bars. Double fisting dicks. cock. You gonna, all you someone's gonna Photoshop me with two dicks in my hand. <laughs> oh, I don't uh, think it has to be Photoshop. <laughs> oh yeah. To see me you on Saturday night. Pictures out there. Ooh. 
so I guess, I guess apparently we're doing this fight. We're doing Curse Blades versus Francis and Gallo 2. Yes, I'm not excited. Why are we doing that? I don't know. Because one person's got butt hurt. Right? Yeah. And then the other weirdo one is jo Joanna Janjacek's going to fight Valentina Shevchenko, Shevchenko yeah. for the 125 pound title. Why not, Matt? Uh, well, I'm just wondering because Joanna is. One in three in our last three fights, she's lost the title and then lost a immediate rematch. Mm -hmm. like, uh, this is they want her to be champion, man. Why? Because she's exciting. She's she's so sexy. I don't. I know these two have fought before. I want to say Shevchenko has destroyed her. I think it was kickboxing. Sounds right. <sighs> Maybe that's why. I don't like it. I don't mind too. Are they both Russian or which? Uh, uh, I think Joanna is Polish, Polish. and then is Russian. Yeah, I like those Eastern Bloc females. Very nice. Das is good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I saw Dana White was talking about Logan Paul. He's saying that guy would get murdered here in the UFC if he had a fight. He would get hurt badly if I ever let him fight in the UFC. I should be arrested. And Logan Paul is like, what was that CM Punk shit? Yeah, good point. <laughs> you know? That's a valid point. And if you're Logan Paul and you just made, what, $4 million, mm -hmm. why would you even be putting the words UFC in your mouth when you could just do everything on your own? You've already proved it. Well, for exposure. He's, is he going to get more exposure? He got $8 million pay per view. Yeah, I, th I think, I think it'll, it'll help him with his next fight that he does. I hear beeping. What's happening? Yeah, it's washer, dryer. Okay. I, I was panicking. I'm like, oh, the memory card is full again. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're all good. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I think it's all good. There's no such thing as bad bad press. He's a smart man. He's doing this on purpose. Well, I, I think, think. He, d he needs to do that shade, shade north cut fight. That one off? He will get destroyed. S Sage will probably n knock him unconscious and then have sex with him. Probably. Yes. And with then flex. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, you know what? I forgot to look at his Twitter post for the week. God damn it. Now what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, damn it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say he was over. He'll oil himself up and yeah. be like, look at this. It's fine, but they could both get paid. You don't need the UFC. You, you're proving it out. Mm -hmm. Like, people are more interested in weirdo fights. Mm -hmm. And the more we can get away from the UFC, I think the better off everybody is. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to a friend of mine. Uh, he's a sports writer for USA mm. Today, and he was asking about the UFC, and I was telling him this exact thing. He's like, he's like, oh, I got a friend who's really into it, and he writes for one of the major websites or whatever. Uh, and he's like, he was just telling me how shit's all watered down, and like, <laughs> it's not the way it was. And he's like, w what did it used to be? So I explained to him, yeah. like, it was like more fun, you know. There was, you it, look at the posters, like every card was stacked. Yeah, and 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 he's like, well, that's what happens because he's he's used to interviewing like. Uh, NFL and NBA stars yeah. a lot and he's saying like when a sport becomes major it gets watered down and then it loses its core fan base but tries to build new fans right. and if they don't do that fast enough then it sinks but it sounds like the UFC has done this it's brought in all these new fans and forgot about guys like us who are like it's hey. like you're churning and burning so the problem with the UFC too we don't have a season like look at no. every other sport has a season. We do not. This is 24/7 365 like mm -hmm. pretty much boom 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 and to them it's it's it generate content at the cost of quality. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have 8,000 platforms that you need to feed, <laughs> right? Like uh, ESPN Plus and uh, yeah. Fox and I know Fox is going away. UFC and TV Fight Pass and yep. You know pay-per-view and wherever else they're gonna end up like you yeah. have all these properties and you just need to put out content so it doesn't matter what the content is it's fill just, it up right so let's have 8,000 fighters on roster mm -hmm. not right. always the best thing no let's see oh I don't know if I should mention this one does it involve dicks yeah two of them okay great please tell us one of them bigger than the other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. I gotta try to figure out how to word this because it's tricky. So the UFC is releasing 25 mini documentaries because they're having their 25th anniversary here shortly. Yes. One of them is about Matt Hughes. Ah. And what's the name of this thing? 
A country boy can survive. So oh, yeah. That's his song. Yeah. Dana White and Matt Hughes were on stage, and they were kind of promoting us, and it got semi-emotional between the two. And Matt got on the mic, and I, I forgot what the show was, but there was a guy way back in the day named Corky. Yeah, um, Urkel. One of those shows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, uh, oh. Wonder Years? No, it's like a life owner. I, I know what you're is, talking about, Corky. Yeah. It was in the 80s, and uh, kind of sounds like him. So and I don't want to make fun of people. This ain't right, but it's just... I didn't realize that he was that fucked up. From the accident? Yeah. Yeah. Like, physically, you can see he's a little off, but talking? Like, man, like, we're... we're he's lucky to be alive, thing. from what I read about it. Yeah. yeah. He's very lucky, you know, and, and yeah, it's sad, but... I'm glad they're doing something. I just wa- rewatched the, remember the UFC we were at where BJ Penn knocked him out, where yeah, he ran out of the cage. Awesome. I just rewatched that recently. Yeah, I was like, I think it was 123. Yeah, yeah, because Detroit. Yep, because uh, they Rampage Machida. Yes, Facebook had like a, they put that other fight on where BJ lost to him. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, I can't, I can't leave it on this. So I got on my fight pass and uh, UFC TV and I watched that fight. And I forgot how crazy that was, but. He's been in some monster wars, man, and the guy's had some physical struggles yeah. now with this accident. So it's kind of sad. But at least he's getting around, you know? Yeah, I still think he's a fucking asshole, but I don't wish bad on anybody. No. I want you to read this Bible and then tell me which character in the Bible you think I am. Uh, you remember that? When he was I do. On the <laughs> coach on the Tough Show? Like, uh, like yeah. oh, man, we, you and I, we're done. We're done! Yeah, we're not doing that. I've heard some shit. I thought he had a book. Maybe. I thought he had a book out, and I thought Sean McCorkle did an honest review of it oh. and broke it down and basically said, what a douchebag this guy is. Hmm. Anyway, don't kick a guy when he's down, Ingo. I won't. Okay. I might suck his dick. You can suck his dick when he's down. <laughs> that's, Wait, a, that's your game. That's what I just said. Did okay. you ever say no, that? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I yeah. stuck it in. Well, I was thinking about like the next story. I was thinking about taking a sip of my drink. Yeah. And then you talk about... Dicks. Yeah. What story? Nice. Good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Next story. <laughs> What's the next one? UFC, or not UFC, Bellator 206. That's that uh, ah. Roy McDonald versus Gegard Musasi fight is happening this Saturday coming up. Really? And Rampage versus Vanderlei Silva 4. Wow. That nobody gives a fuck about. This is this a pay-per-view? This is that thing that's on the zone. Oh. That uh, the streaming new- service. Okay. The good thing is it's only nine ninety nine a month, and you can get a free thirty day trial, and you can cancel. So, guess who's gonna get a free thirty day trial and cancel it? Some little bitch. You're looking nice. at him. I'll have to watch it. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to see that fight. Did you have a pick? Did you go with who do you think is gonna win? Because they're fighting. I believe is at eighty five. Yeah, they have to fight at eighty five because they're doing that welterweight tournament. Rampage at and, and Vanderlei. I don't care about that. I'm talking about Gegard and Rory. Like, who I you think, think Gegard will win. Yeah. I think Gegard will knock Rory out. Oof. I think I think it, I think it will be less brutal than the Rory. Um, fuck, help me out here. Uh, Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler fight. It will, but it will be more definitive. It will be over quicker. Gegard is very crafty and he's very technical. And then the, the, I want to see the face off because talk about two guys that are so calm when mm-hmm. they walk in. I don't know which guy's calmer. Gegard is super calm, but super Rory calm. is like psycho calm, psycho calm as yeah. he walks in. Yeah, I feel like Gegard's thing is genuine, where Rory has this like undertone of like anxiety about him that yeah, he does. You don't see it, but it's in there. So I think I think Gegard, I think he's way more technical. And I think Gegard is uh, smarter than Rory. Yeah. Rory doesn't seem like the brightest guy. Stabbed himself in the hand with a freaking knife from before a title fight or something, wasn't it? Yeah, he was trying to get that seed out of the avocado, so I think he was holding it in his hand and trying to get it's that fucking big. seed. Why do you need a knife for like, that? I have 17 holes in my hand. Is this good? <laughs> I feel Is this bad? I feel nothing. I feel nothing. <laughs> I'm watching myself bleed. Yeah. Lou. Cool. Lou, bingo. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> and then Rampage versus Van. I I don't know about you. I don't care. I don't care either. But you know what I think will happen? What? Nothing. Nothing? They're both going to get tired. <laughs> That's what I think. Well, this is at heavyweight, too. Yeah. <laughs> saw, oh, you want that? Uh, Rampage is fucking massive. He yeah. is so happy at heavyweight. He's a, yeah. he's all of 255. It's going to be 30 seconds of excitement and then 
three rounds or four or five, whatever it is. And I think it should just be three of just. They actually, that should be one minute round. They should tough man that three one minute rounds. Perfect. With a two minute rest between. Love it. Okay. And that couple noodles guy. Stand and bang. Yes. All right, let's move right along. Ass to nuts. Yep. These nuts. Um, <laughs> Conor McGregor. Well, proper whiskey. Oh, speaking of that, I forgot to say, he's going to get that proper whiskey or proper 12 whiskey is one of the cage sponsors. It's going to be on the fucking octagon in oh, that fight. Oh, it's nice that he worked so, that deal in. Yeah, he didn't get the ownership, but he got the free advertising money. Okay. And at the press conference, whiskey talking about, ooh, look at me. I got my whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, UFC President Dana White believes Conor McGregor is better better at mental warfare than Muhammad Ali. Do you agree with that? I don't know. Maybe. I, I guess. It's hard to say. We'll see. If if he beats if he beats Habib, um, then I will agree with the statement. If he doesn't, I don't know. I, I, Muhammad well, yeah. was the best, I think. And I don't. <laughs> With Habib, it's not, if he beats him, it's not because of the mental war. You don't think so? They're, they're not even doing any press for this. They're uh, doing, like, two things, and that was one of them. Yeah. And I know they've had all this shit going back and they forth, have. but I, I just I don't see that. I mean, and then the, to answer the question, I, I can't remember, like, Muhammad Ali's shit talk from back in the day. I watched I a lot like of the fights. I stinging like a bee. And you can, you see all these, like, it's black and white footage. I mean, yeah. we had a fucking black and white TV when I was a kid, for mm-hmm. fuck's sake. Yeah. That's, that's when you're old. Mm-hmm. So th- it's hard to say. I mean, definitely of this era, for sure. There's no one better, in his Better league. than Chael Sonnen, I will say. Yeah. For but sure. le- leaps and bounds. Yes. Because Connor, it's... Like he does his homework on someone, so he knows all this shit, mm-hmm. and then he he can ad lib. I feel Con, um, what's his name? Chael, Chael is very scripted. It's a shtick. He has to f- follow the script. Connor, yeah, listens to the question, thinks about the answer, and then responds. Yes, he's married. He's very calculated, but he can improvise. Yeah, there right. He's on the fly. Poem words up. Poem. Thank you. I'm <laughs> sending them to you. Okay. Psychologically, I told him we wanted to stand and bang. Like Max Holloway. Yeah. Was that Ricardo Lamas? He yes. pointed. I told him psychologically, we wanted to stand and bang. We stand and bang. Like, All right, cool. <laughs> hey, didn't you have a song about Tyron Woodley? You forgot to oh, tell Oh, I me forgot about, about that. that. Yeah, see, out for two months, broken hand. Oof. Fight canceled. Yeah, he's supposed to fight Colby, right? Yep, not gonna happen now. Mm. Busted hand. That was the thing they were talking about last last week. I think it was. We kind of yeah, something, yeah. something's up. Questionable. We weren't sure what was going on. Broken hand. Okay. Not good. I don't know which one, left or right, but either way, not good. If the UFC had a mascot, what would it look like? A little green guy. Green like. Green ball sack, like a Conor McGregor ball sack, because yeah. you're basically owned by yeah, Conor McGregor. Right, right. you're, you're feeling, yeah, I'm thinking. And it like, might have a sword or some kind of a dagger on each of the testicles. Sure. It might have like Philippines 412 or something on the other one, whatever John Jones has tattoo on his 14. test. I don't know on his test, on his chest. Wow. Somewhere between <laughs> testicles, because we're talking about balls. Chesticles and testicles. The testicles. Nudicles. Uh, <laughs> nudicles. That is a thing. Nautages. Yeah. <laughs> Nautages. I'm going to get some nudicles. <laughs> no, 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 something like that. Yeah. All right. Donald J. Turd asks, uh, what do you think of my game plan for Habib? Throw zero strikes in the first two rounds. But chicken can't counter if Habib doesn't strike. Shoot takedowns only. Counter tires, then pound sign Khabib time. I think I can agree with that statement. I think uh, Khabib should take a look at Tyrone Woolley uh, a la Damian Maya. Just stand on the cage? Yeah. Just don't just just don't don't engage Connor and see what Connor does. I don't think Connor plays well in that kind of role. Frustrate him and then go for the takedowns as he said when he gets chances and then when Connor's tired after two rounds, then go ape shit. Start throwing him around like a rag doll and end game, finish the fight. Rag doll. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, something tells me that that might not be the way it goes. 
Anything can happen. Anything can happen. That may. Uh, follow up from Donald. Does anyone else notice that Connor cuts easily, bleeding? Even Aldo cut him while falling unconscious. Seems like a doctor stoppage for Connor's cuts is unlikely, but possible against Khabib. Ground and pound. Anyone talking about Habib's elbows versus Conor McGregor's face? I haven't it's really true. thought He's about got that. Cut a lot. Even in the Chad Mendes fight, he was cut up pretty yeah. bad. I never thought about that. That's an interesting point you make. Hmm. So maybe the the game plan is take him down and then just do a little, you know, from in the guard or whatever, mm. stand back up. It could be a long night for Conor. Or yeah, I don't see him stopping any of these takedowns. No. I just don't see well, it. Well, I wonder if they'll ever even come, because I, I, this could go the way of uh, Jose Aldo. You know, he might just catch him with something quick if he's chackful. What if it's a knee during a takedown? Uh, I'm fine with that. Just fine. More controversy. Yeah. But, but you know what will happen? Uh, Immediate rematch! Yeah. If there's anything controversial, even if it was a fast knockout like Jose, I guarantee they give him... Another fucking chance. Flying knee, Matt. First takedown attempt, flying knee. KO'd. Imagine that. That would be crazy, wouldn't it? And then double flying axe <laughs> hammer strike. To the back of the neck. No DQ. Yeah. <laughs> it's Conor McGregor. He can't DQ the guy. Uh, you fucking kidding me? And He's he running the UFC. Takes you a can't whiskey DQ bottle him. and shoves it up his ass. Proper 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. That's though. fine, yes. Something like that. Okay. I like it. Let's see what Paul uh, Who is the most intimidating person to ever fight in the UFC? Most intimidating? That's tough. Oh, wow. There's a lot of choices. Um, uh, I think Vanderlei Silva was pretty intimidating. I'd say Chuck Liddell in his heyday is pretty intimidating. Anderson Silva in his heyday is pretty intimidating. It depends, like, if you're talking about verbally or physically what mm. they've done to you. How about... Uh, probably, what about Cyborg? What, yeah. what about, I hate uh, to say this, but Ronda Rousey. She was for a time. in her heyday. Very like, intimidating. Who was the fighter? Nobody. And then look at like how the girls that fought her approached her, like their game plans, and I think of Kat Zincano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, ugh. And how many, because it was always first round armbar, first round armbar, first round armbar. Mm -hmm. So that shit gets in your head, so yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you was a pro fighter, which training camp would you want to be a part of? Uh, I'm gonna go to Canada. I like TriStar. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think they're highly professional, very technical. I'm gonna get good training there. Um, I don't think my risk of injury is pretty low at that camp. There's not doesn't seem like GSP, a lot of GSP, Roy McDonald. There's no douchebags there, you know. Just professionals. Ross is smart. Super smart. And you get Donahue. Yeah, I think I'd do well there. It, well, if I could fight, but I can't. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I will agree with that. Yeah. What <clears throat> damages the chances of a fighter losing the fight? <clears throat> what damages the chances of a fighter losing the fight? A low blow or an eye poke? What damages? We, I, I'm confused. Oh, I think he's asking what. Which one is which worse? Which one's worse? We talked about this before. Like, doesn't isn't it something with the eye poke? The, the or no? Is is the groin shots? The likelihood of losing after that is pretty high, isn't well, it? Well, I, I think after any foul specifically those two like I would rather take the low blow because at some point you're going to recover yeah. the eye poke your vision's going to be fucked up yeah. you, it, all these guys they, like how many fingers am I holding I, I'm fucking yes I'm double vision <laughs> I'm double vision yes. I can't fucking yeah. see this it happens one all too. the time and those guys just go out and then they're just getting clobbered by whichever yeah. eye got poked like you just go to the town yeah. on that side not cool so I'd take the low blow like if I have to choose one but the Rigo Channel close out. It's time. Pound sign, let's roll. Pound sign, Matt Rape Train. Pound sign, Ingo Sugar Daddy. Would you rather drink toilet water or clean a public bathroom using only your hand and a soup? A soup? <laughs> a, a, a soup ladle, maybe? I don't know. A soup? Uh, <laughs> I like, use my hand and a soup. Uh, like a, a, a oh, minestrone. You probably mean soap. Soap. <laughs> you, no, you got a, your <laughs> hand <laughs> and a minestrone. <laughs> what the fuck? I use my hand and minestrone. Yeah. I'm yeah. not drinking toilet water. No. That's disgusting. No. What fuck. What kind of question is this? I don't know. Something is that bug? crawling on me. What? It'd Seriously? just be my skin. Seriously? I think it. <laughs> yeah, <I'm trying. laughs> Are you okay over there? No. He's hallucinating. Would you he saw rather smoke earlier. Get tased by a stun gun or pepper spray by Mason Yai. Stun gun. 
you don't want fucking pepper spray. No. Because I've, I've heard the jackass guys, I think it was Johnny Knoxville, because he's done both. He said pepper spray is like a hundred times worse because you that's hours of pain. You, you can't fucking get shit out of your eye. Will you pour milk in your eyeballs? No, it doesn't work. The taser is just instant. Like, oh, that hurt. Yeah. You might have a heart attack and die, but. Well, there is he, that. he also got shot by a gun, too. He did. I'm fucking. He's so, crazy. He's so crazy. He did a lot of things that yeah. were just crazy. Would you rather be buried alive for 12 hours or destroy every piece of technology that you own? Technology. You know, you're afraid to be buried alive? Yes, I am. Have you ever had an MRI done? No, and I hope I never do. I I would. I have a. I, have a, I don't like being like. You know, the claustrophobic? Nah, yeah. I'll take the t buried for 12 hours. I'm not giving up any technology. Okay. Our eyes suck because like your shoulders, my shoulders are pinned against the wall. The top of the MRI is about ooh three inches from your nose, and you're just wedged in there for a good eh, 45 minutes to an hour. But the most horrible I'm, noises you've I'm ever heard. I'm having an anxiety <coughs> reaction right now. I'm just thinking <coughs> about it. <coughs> and you get that kunk, <coughs> kunk, <coughs> kunk, <coughs> and you feel the fucking slamming of the machine. It's like a fax machine on the steroids. I'm not shit my pants. <laughs> Conk, conk, conk. Take my technology. Kunk. I'm. I'll be fine. And then I recall, like, 15 minutes. Hey, how's it going in there? Yeah, I'm cool. Just shut the fuck up. I'm in my zone. I'm in my happy spot. Quit fucking interrupting me. Can't you get a Xanax or something to go when you go in there? Don't they offer you that? No, no. You just <laughs> go in there. I wouldn't do it. Give a nice, like, warm blanket if you want. No. You want a blanket? I've had many MRIs. I think I've had a good four. You're crazy. Not five. No thanks. I can't. You get used to it. The no. first time, it's freaky as fuck. Like, you got to dial in, man. got to dial your shit in. So, it, I would, a coffin would be the same thing. And it's funny that this is, this question is up because Six Flags St. Louis is doing some sort of a contest where they're picking six, I think it's six people, and they're trying to see who can stay in a coffin for 30 hours. And you get, I think, one six-minute bathroom break every hour so 30 hours in a coffin why uh, winner gets $300 I think it's for the 30th anniversary of the park being on $300 yeah for 30 fuck hours fuck you six flags that's <laughs> bullshit maybe 3000 or 30000 $300 yeah, that's some fucking horse shit fuck that 30 hours that's 10 bucks an hour that's ridiculous if you're the lucky winner because if it goes to say all six of the contestants win or make it to the 30 hours, then it goes into a, like a drawing, like a raffle, to see who's gonna be the real winner. So you could potentially do the 30 hours and come out with nothing. You get zero. Good day, sir. Yeah. <laughs> what? Fuck that stupid thing. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Fuck, Mary kill, celebrity edition number 16. Here These we go. are Brazilian models. Mm -hmm. This is Adriana Lima. Oh, look at those nipples. Wow, that's a nice outfit. I like it. Uh, Alessandra Ambrosa or something. Oh, she got a lot of hip action. Mm -hmm. And then Giselle, who's that last name? Bunchin. I, I think this. she's married to Tom Brady. Yeah, she doesn't look good in that photo. I'm going to have to pass on that. We're going we're gonna to kill Giselle Bunchin, mm -hmm. I have to say. I think I'm going to marry this first one. Who is, who is this? Yep. Adrian, Adrian Lee. Yeah, I'm, I like this. It's very nice. I think I'm killing everybody. <laughs> kill like, so fucking that's dead, two weeks in a row. Dead, dead. Or did, did you kill? Skinny. Didn't you kill them all last week? Too? Nah, I'm not Metallica. Huh. Ride the lightning. I don't kill them all. Go. Hmm. Not always. College. You got anything? Uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, you should watch Ozark on Netflix. It's good stuff, man. Right. I got to piss so bad. You do? So. So I'm gonna end the show now. Okay, thanks. <laughs> that has been this week's uh, edition of my announcement. Nice. My name is Michael. I'm watching Ozark. Matt Griffith, thanks for playing. Bye bye. Choo.